that from the haqqaiqs of the holy hajj and the reality of arafah a reminder that <coughs> each speaks to their level of understanding and that to reach to the level of understanding that only Allah want us to reach that once they convey if you don't understand just be patient until that dress can come upon the servant from what they speak will dress the soul that everything the soul hears, Ya Rabbi I heard this reality I want from that reality. I don't want from the basic understanding but I want from its haqqaiqs and in the month of Hajj is, is 12 months of pilgrimage towards this reality that the seeker is taking every year. Every journey begins Muharram and ends in Zulhaj and under the twelfth reality, under the final moon, under the guidance of Imam Mahdi has a tremendous reality of the Muhammadan Hadi, the most guided of the Muhammadan realities that they want to dress upon the khawas of creation, not common. But these are from the elite of what Allah created of their souls and they remind for us that Qalb al-Mu'min Baytullah that everything like a science that the, we're going for the house of Allah and Prophet comes to clarify because this is an adab in which to like a science class you have to put all the elements together to make the understanding, I'm going for the house of Allah And Prophet comes and clarifies the qalb al-mu'min baytullah that the house of the heart of the believer is the house of Allah That if you are trying to reach that reality your heart itself should be a house of Allah and before you go all the way to Hijaz to visit the house of Allah the house of Allah is already within your chest. And Allah described then, clean my house, purify my house, wash my house and circumambulate my house. Means your being to follow your heart and not your heart to follow your body. This world is filled with body pleasures and the reminders that make always the more difficult choice to follow the heart because Allah's house within the heart, the soul within the heart and love and ishq and muhabbat is in the heart not in the brain. So then they came and they taught us in our life, wash your heart, make your heart like a Kaaba so that when the invitation comes Samina Watan, I heard Ya Rabbi Labaik and I'm coming, but I'm coming with your house in me to see the greater reality of that house. And Allah come and teach that the real and only mu'min for Allah is Sayyidina Muhammad Only believer that Allah cares for is Prophet We are all the rest just cells within a being. A drop. We said before, if, if anything you read from Qur'an and from understanding, if we put ourselves in it, the mani, the, the understanding is completely different. If you took a path in which to be nothing, لَيْنَا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانِكَ إِنِي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ That I'm an oppressor to myself and Ya Rabbi I'm nothing. And Allah then says, yes if you agree that you're oppressor to yourself then we give you a najat and a salvation. So as soon as they came and told us, be nothing, be nothing, all the keys of reality will open into your understanding of nothingness. If I'm nothing then Ya Rabbi who is the mu'min that you're talking, who is the qad that you're talking about? And they come and whisper, Prophet So you are coming to the location of a house whose master is Sayyidina Muhammad Rabbil Bayt, the Lord of this house. What gives the house its nobility is not its stones and the fabrics that they put upon it 
but whose arwa and soul is located within it. And Allah describes, if you're looking for me, قُلِينِ كُنْتُمْ تُهِبُونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ And then I'm Ghafur Raheem, I'll forgive all your sins, come looking for me. But these awliyaullah will guide you on the beads that you're not able to put together like a tasbih for your life, they just seem like beads of information. But these awliya come and they take these beads because they themselves, they are the hablillah, they are the strings of Allah That Allah strung them with these knowledges and they became a tasbih. Because they are the ropes of Allah they are the ropes that come from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Faqam, come to that house, come to that reality of Prophet and Allah describe, if you're looking for me, I'm with Nabi'een, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. So it means if the arwa of Prophet is at the Holy Kaaba, then must be all Nabi'een, 124,000 souls of Prophets. We say every year, you never know which year somebody like, ah, oh, now I know what you're saying. Nabi'een, 124,000 Siddiqeen. 124,000 shuhada, 124,000 salihin, all their souls that don't encompass more than is light. Their souls are located in the time of hajj, they make a, a pilgrimage for Allah in that Kaaba. And from inside the Kaaba they can see the people making tawaf because they are the people of the gate. They are the people of tafakkur, ulul bab, they hold the responsibility of that door because that door when it opens it's the city of knowledge because the city of knowledge is the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad Of course they're all inside the city, they're not outside the city. These awliya they're all inside the city and they're watching all the other people walk around the village, walk around, they keep making walking around. But they're inside the city, they're inside that reality. So the first level of tawaf, they have to go seven times for their seven names and seven paradises. And each time they make their tawaf, they acknowledge, Ya Rabbi that I'm here, I came and I came for one of my realities and I'm circumambulating you seven times for each of my names and each of its paradises and grant that name its reality and grant that reality to dress my, my being. That take me from normal to your khawas, take me from my nothingness into your loving embrace in which you want to bestow your realities. That knowledge when you hear it you'll be dressed by it because your soul will say, I heard Ya Rabbi I want for my seven names. I want my arwah to make this Kaaba, I want my arwah to make this tawaf. And every salah is a hajj, every ibadah and every worshipness we are doing is a hajj. And in this month of Zul Hajj, most powerful when Allah are going to open, open all the realities that your soul has been travelling to me. And why Allah want all the people to come for hajj? Because what He's bestowing upon these khawas and these elite souls, He wants them to come and take the tabarak of this tajalli. That what come upon them, Atiullah, Atiya Rasul, and all those inside, they are the ulul am. The Atiullah, the one whom obeys Allah is the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad inside. Those whom obey the Rasul they're around and those who obeyed, those who obeyed the ulul am, all of them rotating and circumambulating and Prophet the one who circumambulates the reality of Allah wa Izzatullah, Izzat al-Rasul wa Izzat al-Mu'mineen. And from that Izzat al-Mu'mineen it disperses out to all those who are making the hajj. And wherever they are it's always a hajj in their presence. It's always a Kaaba in their presence. They are the living Kaabas of Allah 
and tajallis are moving from their hearts and their realities. And from your tawaf you go for your safa marwa and you're going seven times to open the seven springs within your heart. That Allah want to dress you from your realities, that want to dress you from the oceans of kawthar and that at the seventh time of your safa marwa means your, your life is about opening these seven springs of realities within the heart of the believer. There are the seven lataifs of the heart, the five they talk about, the fana and the baqa and that each of these springs must be opened. So when they're making the safa and marwa they're reaching to one side and asking Allah Ya Rabbi open from those springs until they reach the seventh and they hit the ground, they sit the haqar and say, Ya Rabbi grant me a najat and the zamzam to appear. The zamzam is the fitrat al-Islam when Allah says that what you did as a man and of your bad character I make you to be like my rijal whom they are innocent and pure. Innocent and pure I will make you to be reborn innocent and pure and that your heart will be the fountains of zamzam and the source of zamzam is the kawthar. So then they call these awliyaullah also zamzami because anytime you drink and eat in front of them all of that reality is dressed upon those servants and upon any who are in their precincts or in their vicinity. From that Safa and Marwa Allah then describes the battle of Sayyidina Ibrahim, the Jamarat and three shaitans that the big, bigger and biggest of the shaitans that when you reach towards your seven names and seven realities even you ask for it if you didn't understand it it doesn't matter they're not caring if you understand it or you think you got it or not but they want you to know what to ask for you can't ask for what you don't know say ya rabbi let me to be granted from my reality of my tawaf my seven names ya rabbi let my seven names give us support and help to me in this dunya and that this Safa Marwa that they're going, Ya Rabbi open the seven springs within my being and my reality and make my heart to be like a zamzan overflowing. That anybody who drinks from it to be blessed, to be cured and to be healed from it, to give in their Islam, Iman wa Maqam al ihsan from it. It's enough just to ask because you are with Nabiyeen, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin, Allah said, this is the best of company. But we are accompanying these, these uh, great personalities that teach us what to ask for. Then they say, when you're going for your jamarat because now you did all of those realities but the whole of Hajj is this Arafah and the significance of Arafah. And then Sayyidina Ibrahim comes to teach that everything that you did, I'm about generosity. I got those good characteristics. This means you're going now into the father of faith and teaching that Sayyidina Ibrahim had a, a vision that I have to sacrifice the child and said, no I can't. He said, I went back to sleep, no I can't. Third time I have to do it and all my life all I prayed from Allah was a child and everything else I gave to Allah that he can have everything and anything. And he was most generous Sayyidina Ibrahim And the test came and Allah is now describing with all that been dressed to you, now your biggest battle is against shaitan and opening three. That between this reality of the arsh there are locks upon you, there are locks upon, there are locks upon your ears. A lock upon your eye, your spiritual vision and a khiswa that veiling you from your reality. And shaitan's job is to block with these three locks that never, never open your hearing and that's why everyone's listening to bad music all the time. So that they don't hear what their voice is telling them from what Allah wants. 
doesn't want us to see our reality so he busies us with every type of vision and movie possible so that you never sit and contemplate and close your eyes and say, what is my reality? What is the vision of my soul? What does my soul want to teach me? What does my soul want to speak to me? Teach me and if I hear it enough and listen to its teaching, Allah will begin to lift the veil of its blindness and they become Ahlul Basira. So they did the tawaf and they did the realities and Allah dressed them from their seven names. These guys we're talking about, they know themselves. Prophet said, you don't know Allah until you know yourself and if you don't know yourself you don't know Allah They know themselves. They know what Allah dressed them in their names and their realities. They understood the seven springs and what Allah has dressed and opened them. And then their greatest battles was with the shaitan and Sayyidina Ibrahim comes and teaches the first level of shaitan is to not hear what Allah has asked of you. Say, no it can't be and says, no it is going to be. So no it can't be. And the whole concept of that reality was that the body is not going to submit to what Allah wants. And that is the Islam, the Islam has to submit. As soon as he fought that shaitan that, I'm going to do what they're asking me to do regardless if it's popular or not. Then Sayyidina Hagar represents Maqam al-Iman because she listened to the Rasul. Shaitan came to her and said, do you know what the Rasul is about to do? How he's going to sacrifice your child? He said, whatever he's been ordered, I am from the people of Samina wa because now we are moving to who Sayyidina Ismail is. Why Allah from such a being brought out the holiest and most perfected of creation? From Sayyidina Ismail is Nur Muhammad going to appear. Because all of this Hajj reality is going to be dressed in the reality of Sayyidina Ismail Because the secret is not in the big personality. The secret may be something small that people overlook. The big personality, he got the order, sacrifice your property, kind of battled with it. Not like Imam Hussain salam. he sacrificed his entire family. Went to the wife and she says, Samina wa ta'ana, that what he's been ordered, we are obeying. So it means then the level of faith, if your body is submitting, your faith will be strong. If you're submitting in real, your faith will be strong. The faith of awliya like mountains that you can't imagine what kind of storms are coming to them, their faith will be strong. Now a little bit of craziness and the, on the internet and people are calling, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on? More the question should be is, why are you blowing in the wind like that? The faith must be weak. Maybe your practices are not strong. If your practices are strong, your connection is strong, everything that you're doing, there is no what's going on for you. Your body, your Islam is istiqam, is rooted into the earth, it's not moving. If that's your condition, you're like Sitna Hagar where your iman is perfect. She said, whatever he's been ordered, we're with you and spit on shaitan. And the most perfected, most perfected of them is Sayyidina Ismail salam. When the body was shaking and the mom was disturbed, Maqam al ihsan came and told the body, don't worry, you find me to be patient with what Allah has ordered for you. So the Maqam al ihsan will save us. That's why Allah wants these realities open. If your Islam is going to be tested, your submission, those whom are listening and not Muslim, it doesn't matter. Whatever your submission is in your practices, if they're strong and true and based on truth, your faith should be strong like a mountain. If your practices are strong, your faith is strong, Allah makes something new to be born from you, Maqam al ihsan Maqam al ihsan comes as a youth, youthful innocence. This is the way of futuwa. This is the way of Imam Ali 
that your youthful innocence should be overtaking you. Your youthful innocence will draw its sword and teach your body, submit to what Allah has, stop shaking. If you have no muqam al ihsan of course your body going to be and running and calling everybody on the internet, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on? Because they have no firmness. When the body is firm in its practices, it understood. This whole way is based on tafakkur. None of this opens with the eyes of your physical eyes and watching on the internet. It opens by sitting and making your tafakkur and your contemplation that you're a person and a, and a reality that you want it from the reality of your soul. When that opens, their body is firm in their belief, their iman is firm in their belief, their maqam al ihsan will come, their Sayyidina Ismail salam will come and tell them, don't worry, be patient, I will be patient with what Allah has ordered. Now you go to the Qur'an. So if we understood now this journey like a mountain, your Islam, shaitan is going to come and hit you and make your practices to be weak. Your Iman is going to come again to hit your practices to be weak. You overcome them, you're at the pinnacle, you're at the top of Jabal Rahmah and that's the Arafah. That's why there's the pinnacle on the top with the little stone, that's Sayyidina Ismail that your maqam al ihsan will save you if you reach towards that reality. And that reality, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْهَرْ That is the kawthari reality. It's not the people who give sadaqah, these are not the people who give zakah, but these are the people whom Allah described, إِنَّا تَيْنَكَ الْكَوْثَرْ فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْهَرْ they prayed unto their Lord and they lived a life of sacrifice. As a result that is the opening of the kawthari. Why Allah is describing Sayyidina Ismail as a kawthari that from his soul is coming the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and because of his noble lineage he must be drinking from zamzam, we accept nothing less than zamzam for his soul. That's why Allah opened the zamzam for his mother to give to Sayyidina Ismail not to the other prophets but to give to Sayyidina Ismail that this reality is a kawthar reality, it only drinks zamzam. So all these kawthari people Allah only gives them zamzam to drink because the nobility of their soul they are the khawas of the heavens and their souls are nourished and bathed in that reality. And Sayyidina Ismail is coming to teach that with all of that reality if you're understanding, Allah then described when Sayyidina Ibrahim was about to sacrifice, we ransomed him with a tremendous ransom. Means this maqam and all this hajj is based on your Qur'an. So people are doing all sorts of practices and thinking those practices will save you and get you towards your reality and Allah said, no, 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 go back to what I'm describing. This whole reality of sacrificing that boy and that he represents maqam al-ihsan and Allah said, there was no need to sacrifice means I don't need from you to, to give yourself completely, I'm going to ransom you, I'm going to take what you owe and I'm going to give you the goat instead. Means that when you give the qurban Allah will wash away every difficulty, every hardship, every badness that we put upon ourselves, and that we were not able to achieve what Allah wanted us to achieve. So, but at least you know who the reality of Sayyidina Ismail is or at least towards the understanding what any Prophet is impossible to understand. But towards the understanding of that reality that Ya Rabbi we're asking to reach to that and to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And then how? فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ Live a life in which you sacrifice. Sacrifice from yourself, from your time, from your ability, from your efforts, don't be busy not to serve because everything else you're doing is completely worthless and rubbish. 
it's not going to get you into paradise. You know there are people making fortunes and they give like a shilling in the way of Allah They give like a chocolate bar and say, good, enjoy it. Hope you guys can accomplish a lot with that. A chocolate bar. Are you thinking your, your, your wealth is going to save you? Or it's going to be a means in which to be punished by Allah And this kawthari are coming and teaching, no, no. The, the, the pinnacle of all the hajj was the qurban. And something maybe people think is, oh I give charity, I don't need to give a qurban. No, no, no. Charity exists within the qurban but qurban does not exist within charity. These are two separate realities. It's charitable when you give the money away for the meat but that meat has to be sacrificed. Why? It's in the place of that reality, the Ya Rabbi that I'm not reaching, my sins have overtaken me with the blood of that creature. That creature will reach its reality and sacrifice itself for me and you. The creature is saying, فَصَلِي Rabbika. it's doing the same. So it's not asking you for something it's not. It's agreeing to Allah you love this Bani Adam, I sacrifice myself for them to achieve their stations. I will take their burden. And the creature takes all the burden and grants you the maqam and the station. We pray that Allah inspires always to be of service. In days of difficulty it's the only safety, it's the only way to get nazar of Prophet Don't post articles, don't post political statements, don't do anything that buy you a ticket into Jahannam. If you want to do anything post your shaykh's articles. Because you're behind his flag, he knows exactly what he's supposed to be doing and not doing. Stay out of political issues. Keep yourself busy with khidmat. Be of service, sing, recite, play, read, do something in the way of Prophet Why? So that you have the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad You don't have the nazar by doing your salah, you had to do it. You don't have the nazar of doing those amas but when you do something from love, you now have their vision and their gaze upon you. That you're putting your love into what you believe, you busy yourself with your love and we should be safe from all fitness and difficulties inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifun wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bisi Rasulat al-Fatiha. When people don't understand the time that we live in, there's no need to protest. Everything is exactly the way Allah wants it for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi There's no need to go anywhere to say anything, to be angry about anything. All you got to do is hide. Keep your love and stay out of the way inshaAllah. Allah keep us to be safe. Shaykh, is there time still or is maqrib Maqrib and shall we call the azan for maqrib? Then uh, fasting we'll have our iftar and after the iftar we'll pray the maqrib and then rejoin with the Khatm al Khawjagan inshaAllah. And uh, the, those that are watching online Allah bless you, dress you, accept the Arafah from all of us that Allah dress us from the lights of Arafah, accept the, the hajj upon us, the reality of the hajj upon us and that grant us the blessings of Eid inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad and Mustafa. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.